Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at a very exciting turn of events with A2A having just released their first aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator. For many of you I'm sure that A2A will need absolutely no introduction. For those of you though who are perhaps unfamiliar with A2A they really are masters of their craft creating historically some of the best aircraft that we've seen available within flight simulation. A2A are essentially to GA aircraft and warbirds what PMDG are to study level jets. Though I would actually go as far as to say that A2A really go above and beyond any other developer that I've come across. They have a very special ability to create not only a very highly detailed, highly accurate model, but also bring you an aircraft that really feels like a living, breathing piece of machinery. As usual we're going to be carrying out a full review of the product here today and there is plenty for us to cover. On the face of it, the A2A Comanche 250 may just look like any other single engine GA aircraft available within the sim. Certainly though, as we go through our flight here today, you'll start to see very quickly that that is anything but the case. As you can probably tell, I've long been a fan of A2A and their products, so I'm very excited now to see one of their aircraft available within Microsoft Flight Simulator. As always though, I will be aiming to give you a full, accurate and unbiased review of the product. For our flight today we are currently on the ground at Hudson Valley Regional Airport and we're going to be taking the Comanche on a fairly short regional hop over towards Block Island just off the coast of Rhode Island. The cruise time for our flight today is going to be around 40 minutes. We're going to be carrying out a full flight all the way through from a cold and dark start right through to shutdown. And additionally as well today with the A2A aircraft just being that little bit more special we're also going to be carrying out a full walk around. We'll run through some maintenance procedures as well and also during the cruise we'll run through the extensive onboard tablet. One quick note to point out before we begin, the A2A Comanche does make use of extensive external programming from the sim. So for example the sounds, the aircraft flight model all run externally. As a result that did play a little bit of havoc with my typical recording tool so any peculiarities that you see during the external shots of the aircraft, those can simply be placed down to the Comanche not playing very well with the recording tool that I typically use. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, certainly a very special one lined up for you here today. As always, if you do, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. We've just pulled the aircraft from the hangar, so first things first, let's go through the maintenance log. So we are now in the cockpit of the Comanche, and as I say, first thing we'll do is take a look at the maintenance page of the onboard tablet. Firstly, in terms of the airframe, you can see we can add or remove the tip tanks we're going to be running with the tip tanks for our flight today. There are also various other aircraft equipment options available and as with any A2A product these are not just visual niceties, you will actually see associated effects. So for example if you fit the fairings you'll see a slight increase in the aircraft's performance. From the maintenance tab we also have the option to overhaul the aircraft. Before we consider that though we can inspect the state of our Comanche. And as you can see the aircraft systems generally given a clean bill of health. Not too surprising there as we are running a brand new PA24 Comanche 250. You can see we've got less than an hour currently on the airframe. The only issue worthy of consideration at the moment we currently have a low battery voltage so that may make starting the aircraft a little bit trickier. And once again wear and tear is modelled on an A2A aircraft so all of the various systems you see here may be subject to failure. The same is true of our 250 horsepower Lycoming 0540. The engine is modelled in absolutely superb detail, we'll talk more about that during the flight. Again the realism and the accuracy of this A2A aircraft really unparalleled within the sim. Not only is the oil system modelled but we can also choose different grades of oil based on the outside operating temperature. According to A2A the level of detail is such that each individual cylinder of the engine has been modelled including the combustion process. Once again for me A2A are the only add-on developer that I've come across that really make the aircraft feel like a living, breathing, organic piece of machinery. Once again, if we inspect our engine, you can see there all of the components green across the board, so everything working correctly. You can see there as well, we've even tested the compression of all six cylinders. As with everything else that is modelled, it will affect engine power output if you have lower compression on a cylinder. But again, we've only got 0.81 hours on our brand new engine, so everything looking good here for the flight today. We've taken care of the tech log now, we know the aircraft's in a satisfactory state to fly. So what's the next thing we'd be doing on a realistic flight here? We'd be going for our walk around and with the A2A Comanche we can make our way around the externals of the aircraft making sure that the Comanche is fit to fly. Okay so just having exited the cockpit we are now ready for the walk around and as you can see here starting with the right hand flap. We've currently got the flap set fully down. 
And we can physically move those flaps, make sure that the linkages are working correctly, that the flaps are fixed in position. Not much give there at the moment, as you can see, if we were flying an older aircraft, expecting to see a little bit more give there. And typically that is modelled on an A2A product. Checking the overall condition of the wing here as well. Everything looking pretty satisfactory, so let's move on to the right hand aileron. Okay, so now down at the right hand aileron, and once again everything looking good in terms of condition. As before, we can physically move the flight control, make sure it's working in the correct sense. We'd also visibly check the linkages there as well. And again, everything looking satisfactory, we can move around to the wingtip. Right, so we're now down at the wingtip tank, and this for me really typifies what a quality product the A2A Comanche actually is. Firstly there, a beautiful shot of the aircraft, but just listen to the sounds, look at the attention to detail here, as we check the fuel level on our wingtip tank. So firstly opening up the cover, and opening up the plug there for the tank itself. Basically checking there, the tank is empty at the moment, a little bit hard to tell perhaps, but there would be a visible difference there if we had the aircraft fueled up. Making sure that we replace the cap once again, and the cover. Further to that, we also need to check we don't have any water in the fuel system. The engine doesn't tend to run too well on water. We should still have a little bit of fuel here in the tip tanks. If you do have any water, it would be a noticeably different colour here versus the fuel, the blue avgas. Onto the leading edge of the right hand wing here, just checking the condition of the landing lights. Typically we'd have the lights on here for the walk around, I just chose to leave those off for today. Just to save on the battery, we're obviously going to be taking a little bit more of an extended look at the aircraft. And now down to the underside of the right hand wing, again just checking the overall condition. And whilst we're down here we can remove the tie down as well. Okay, so now checking the contents of our main fuel tank here on the right hand wing. Once again we'll open up the cover, move the cap, again excellent animation, excellent sounds. And you might just about be able to make out this time, we do have a difference there in colour. You can see there the blue of the avgas and the tanks are fully topped off. So we've got the main tanks pretty much full here for our flight today, just a little bit of fuel in the tip tanks. Closing up the cover once again. And now checking the right hand main landing gear. Once again, just checking the overall condition of the tyre, the brake lines. Whilst we're down here as well, we can remove the chocks. Onto the front of the beautiful Comanche 250. Just checking the prop blades, the prop spinner, and the engine intake, making sure that everything's clear. Once again, everything looking to be in visibly good condition. So let's move on to the left hand side of the aircraft. Okay, so down now to the engine cowling, we'll check our oil quantity. So opening up the cover. Unscrewing the oil probe. It might be a little bit tricky to make out in the video, but we've got just below 9 quarts of oil. And looking at the colour of the oil there as well, the oil in good condition. And once again, all of that is modelled on the aircraft. The oil will not only deplete, but also deteriorate over time. We will periodically need to carry out an oil change. And there's a feedback system there as well, as the oil deteriorates. If you're running an engine with poor oil quality, then you'll see those components of the engine start to deteriorate more rapidly as well. So again, really nice level of detail from A2A. Anyway, for our flight today, the oil is looking good. So the oil probe can go back in once again. And closing up the cover. Down now then to our left main fuel tank. And once again, we can just check the quantity. Should be a little bit easier to see with this one. Again, you can just about see there the blue hue that we've got there from the avgas just topping off the tanks. And making sure that's closed and locked once again. And on the left hand wing we can remove the tie down, remove the pitot cover, and ordinarily here as well we check the stall warning, we should be able to hear that from the cockpit. On the left hand tip tank same checks as before, so once again opening up the cover, visibly checking the tip tanks there, the fuel gauges on most GA aircraft are notoriously inaccurate, so visually checking the fuel, definitely the best way to go. Again the tip tank pretty much empty. Closing up the cover once again, and just checking the condition here of the tip tank, and the left hand nav light. Checking the left hand side of the fuselage, we'll check the tail. Checking the antennas there as well. And I'm not sure whether or not that's supposed to be the static port, but checking that of course that that's visibly clear of any obstructions. Down now at the back then of the Comanche, and once again we'll remove our tie down. 
We'll check the horizontal stabilizer, making sure that's full and free. And we can check the linkage there as well. And lastly, before we get back in the cockpit, we'll just get the aircraft loaded up. So coming down to the baggage compartments, we can open that up. Just the two of us here today, but nevertheless, quite a lot of luggage for our trip down to Block Island. Apparently our passenger doesn't travel lightly. You can see there as well the aircraft squatting down on the oleos as we load it up. Really nice level of attention to detail. So all of our bags on board. We can close out the baggage compartment and make our way back to the cockpit. So welcome then to the beautiful and highly detailed cockpit of the A2A Comanche 250. On the ground at Hudson Valley Regional, as we've discussed, just the one passenger here, we're going to be heading over to Block Island. So first things first, we'll get the aircraft door closed up. And just making sure that is secured and latched here at the top. The flight control lock has been removed. We just stowed that down in the left-hand storage compartment. Obviously, we just carried out our walk around, so running through the before start checks. Pre-flight inspection has been completed. The passenger briefing is complete. Seat belts are secure. Parking brake is set. The park brake is modelled correctly as well. You do have to depress the brakes first there before you take the parking brake on. Carburetor heat is set cold. Fuel selector, as we discussed there during the walk around, we're going to be running off the main tanks here today. So selecting both through to the main tanks. Circuit breakers. As you can see there, we've actually got a circuit breaker already tripped for the starter motor. We'll reset that for now, but the circuit breakers, nice little demonstration there, are fully modelled, they can be tripped. The circuit breakers are checked. Avionics master is off, the door is closed and latched. For the start checks, the throttle will just crack a quarter of an inch open. Mixture will set through to fully rich. And the prop is set through to fully forward. Master switch can go on. We'll get the beacon light on. And fuel pump can go on here as well. Just checking there, we do have positive fuel pressure. And the fuel pump can come off once again. We'll prime the engine three times. Again, everything is modelled on the aircraft, so you can over prime and under prime. It's a lot easier to deal with under priming, so we'll just go with three for now. And locking that up once again. Making sure that the prop area is clear. You may notice as well it's getting a little bit hazier in here. That's not a trick of the eyes. A2A do actually model the canopy and indeed the aircraft here fogging up. We've got two people here sitting, breathing in and out, at least virtually modelled. And no ventilation currently on the Comanche. We'll take care of that in a moment. We'll open up the DV window, give everyone a shout. Clear prop. The mags can go through to both. And we can hit the starter. As you've seen there during the introduction, the engine doesn't necessarily always catch immediately, but nevertheless there we're pretty lucky. But excellent modelling the engine overall. HWA are the only developer I've come across that really make an aircraft feel alive. Really does feel like a working piece of machinery. Anyway, idling at 1000 RPM, the oil pressure has come up there into the green. And once again, just confirming the fuel pump is selected off. Mixture will leave as is for now. And just checking our engine temperatures and pressures. Everything looking good. So for the taxi checks, the Avionics Master can go on. Radios and Avionics will set up in just a moment's time. We'll just continue on for now as the Garmin there initializes. Those waiting on the TORS test complete. Transponder is set to standby. Light instruments. TARS system test OK. Are checked. The QNH is set. We've got 065 there on the HSI. 065 there on the compass. Laps are retracted. Just visually check the operation here of the flaps. There's full flaps. And same there on the right hand side. So flaps are checked and again just confirm they are retracted. Primer is in and locked. Landing gear indication we have the gear selected down with a green light. We'll leave the parking brake on for now. And coming down to the GTNXI unit we'll start setting up the flight plan over towards Block Island. Just working our way through our messages. So coming down to flight plan, we are departing out of Hudson Valley Regional. 
We're going to be tracking initially inbound towards the Kingston VOR, which is India Gulf November. And we have Kingston. After that, we're going to be tracking to Waypoint Mooney, Mike, Oscar, Oscar, November, India. Then it'll be on to the Hartford VOR, which is Hotel Foxtrot Delta. After that will be the Groton VOR, Golf Oscar November. So 78445, Tower and Array Base, runway 24. And then on towards the Sandy Point VOR, which is located on Block Island, and that's Sierra Echo Yankee. So 7824, 78445. Lastly, Block Island State itself. That's Kilo Bravo India Delta, and we have Block Island. So just running through the flight plan there. Hudson Valley, out towards Kingston, Waypoint Mooney, Hartford, Groton, Sandy Point, and then Block Island itself. Looks like we do have an update here on the G10XI, we'll take care of that later on. It's on to the map display for now. You can see the initial course outbound 063. So we'll set that up here on the HSI. Cessna 54003, hotel, that's just tower, runway 24, quick for takeoff, the direction of flight. There's 063, we're going to be departing off runway 06. So we'll set the heading bug here as well. And we can tune up the VOR, so we'll come back to flight plan. Go Kingston, waypoint info. And frequency 117.6, we'll set that in the active. And we'll go back to map. So you can see we are picking up the Kingston VOR there. We also have an engine management and uh, fuel computer. You can see currently that wants us to fill in the data. I haven't played around with that too much yet. You can actually automatically set it up as well via the tablet, which is a really nice function. We're just going to clear that for now. We'll leave things as is. So you can see we're currently here on the main GA apron. We're going to taxi out to the southeast and then along the main taxiway here for runway 06. So off the brakes. Up to 1000 RPM here, the Comanche rolling very nicely. Obviously we'll take things nice and slow here as we come out of the flight line. Just take a little bit more power. The aircraft taxis very nicely. Indeed it does everything very nicely. You'll certainly get a feeling for that throughout the flight. And the Comanche, definitely one of those aircraft that just feels right. It has a certain feeling of weight and power to it. And of course, by GA standards, the aircraft is a little bit of a thoroughbred. And you certainly feel that with the A2A Comanche 250. Just coming up slightly on the power here to get us up the hill. And approaching the threshold for runway 06. Again, not going to worry about the wind here. There's not really anything to speak of. So onto the brakes. As discussed, you do have to depress the brakes fully before you can set the parking brake. And again, just coming back up on the throttle, leaving the engine idling at 1000 RPM to avoid spark plug fouling. So for the run up, the park brake is set. Seatbelts and shoulder harnesses are secure. Doors and windows are closed. You do get a change of sound there as well with the DV window open, which is very nice. Flight controls. Check 12, cross with 2, 4, Alpha 4, Golf, Delta, Are free and correct. The fuel quantities are checked. We've got about 30 US gallons there in each main tank. And for the AUX tanks there, they're about a quarter full. Only around five gallons in each of those. Mixture is set fully rich. The fuel selectors are both set on the fullest tank. For the run-up, we'll come up to 2,000 RPM. Again, lovely little bit of vibration there. The visual effects on the aircraft as well, very good. Much above the average standard in the sim. So that's 2,000 RPM, temperatures and pressures are checked. No need to lean the mixture, we'll cycle the prop. We need to do that three times. 
Probably a little bit aggressive there on the first attempt. So just making sure the governor's working, also cycling some oil through the system. We'll check the magnetos. So firstly onto the left mag. You can see there we've got about 110 RPM drop, max is 125. We're looking for no more than 50 RPM difference between the two. And more than any other aircraft in the sim, you really do need to be checking these sorts of things on an A2A aircraft. Again, everything is modelled in very high detail. So max a check, making sure we go back to both. Car peaks. So just pulling the car peaks. Showing about a 200 RPM drop there with the car peak, that's working correctly. And the suction check showing just above 4 units. Apparently according to the checklist we really want to see above 5 there, but plus or minus 2 inches. So coming back to 1000 RPM. Once again temperatures and pressures are looking good, that cylinder head temperature nicely up into the green now. Initially we'll just come all the way through to idle. This is 445, your number 2 following this, that's number 24, quit away. Number 2 for 24, quit away, that's 445. So idling there around 600 RPM. Not going to leave things there too long, don't want to kill the engine, so back up to 1000. That's the run-up check that's complete. The before takeoff checks, the fuel pump can go on. Once again, the fuel selectors are both on the fullest tanks. Carburetor heat is set cold, flaps will leave up for the takeoff, we've got plenty of runway. Trim is set neutral. The heading indicator, we'll set that again once we come onto the runway, but 150 versus 150. Transponder can go through to out. Sound Charlie, traffic just off your left wing, 1800, type unknown. Engine temperatures and pressures. So, fuel pressure up in the green, oil pressure up in the green. Same there for the oil temp and the cylinder head temperatures. Strobe light will take on. Same there for the Peter heat while we're down there. And lastly, we'll get the landing light on here as well. Let's see before takeoff checklist complete. All clear on final, part brake can come off. And we'll get ourselves into position here on runway 06. Okay, so we're all set here on runway 06, just confirming the flaps are selected up, off the brakes. We want full power here for the takeoff, and just look at the visual effects, listen as well to the sounds included with the aircraft as we depart. Really nice effort from A to A. Looking to rotate around 85 miles an hour. And needing quite a bit of right rudder here to keep the aircraft straight during the takeoff, but the rudder feels excellent, feels very weighty. The aircraft actually just lifting off slightly ahead of time there of its own accord. That's with uh, neutral trim currently set. Anyway, climbing away, we do have a positive climb, we'll tap the brakes, gear can come up. And just maintaining full power here till we're up through a thousand feet. Clear now of the terrain, so we'll start getting the nose down. We're looking to make a cruise climb here at 120 miles an hour. And just tracking inbound towards the Kingston VOR, so coming slightly left here on the heading. Getting ourselves aligned there on the CDI bar. 
Come back now to a climb power setting, we'll go with 25 inches. And 2500 RPM. Yeah, you still have the, uh, the jet staff, you're right. So engine power is set. Been good in terms of our tracking, just letting that speed build up. The climb checks, power is set. Again, the on route climb speed 100 to 120 miles an hour. We're going to go for 120. Temperatures and pressures looking good. Just using a little bit of right rudder here still at the moment to keep that ball centered up on the turn slip indicator. We'll leave the mixture as is for now. We're still only up at around 2,000 feet. And interestingly, not included there in the checklist, but the gear is up, lights are out, flaps are up. So you can see we are approaching the Kingsford VOR. And we're going to be turning right in just a couple of seconds onto a course of 108. So we'll set the CDI bar onto a course of 108. There's 108. We'll slew the heading bug around here as well. The aircraft seems quite comfortable here, sitting at around 100, 110 miles an hour here in the climb. We're getting about 700 feet per minute rate of climb out of the Comanche. And just come up through 3,000 feet, so we'll just start to lean out the mixture a little bit here as we climb. You can see there we actually get a percentage of our horsepower output there on the engine management computer. So 76%. Just keep leaning. Target 2109, you climb 181, 2000. Looks like that's about the maximum we're going to get at the moment. There's 77%. The aircraft is an absolute joy to hand fly. We didn't get much of a chance to talk about it during the takeoff, but again on the rudder the aircraft feels excellent. The Comanche definitely makes use of a lot of external programming. Certainly, for example, the sounds are externally programmed. There's a little bit of a bug there for me at the moment. There's supposed to be a program that auto runs in the background, but that doesn't actually start up for me, so I have to execute that manually, otherwise there are no sounds on the aircraft internally. And similarly, there must be quite a bit of external flight modeling going on here, as the Comanche really doesn't fly like many other GA aircraft that I've come across in the sim. Deflection at 507, you can go direct to Medina. During that takeoff, I had about half full deflection on the rudder out to the right, just to keep us straight with that pull from the engine. Typically in the sim, that would have us spearing off out towards the right, but here the Comanche was very easy to track down the centre line. And the same is true here at the moment, the aircraft definitely has a feeling of weight on the flight controls. The controls feel very tight here as well. Equally though, they don't feel directly linked to my sim flight controls. What I mean by that, they don't feel overly snappy, overly sensitive, digital in nature. So really nice flight model, very impressed overall. We're just going to continue flying here manually up to 5,000 feet. Then we'll get the Comanche leveled off, we'll test out the autopilot. Number 68 Dotter, what approach did you want in the Cheshire County? Certainly I've had no issues with the autopilot so far on a couple of test flights. They're just approaching 5,000. Pitching down. Dragon 2109, turn left track TB. Nicely established on course there now, looking at the HSI. 3626 Julia, Philly approach, got similar to 2984. And I have to say, if I was completely honest, the Comanche initially for me wasn't all that exciting. I was certainly very excited by virtue of the fact it's an A2A product, but it's not an aircraft that I specifically have all that much interest in, but I'm very quickly falling in love with this aeroplane. It's a really, really excellent effort from A2A. 7161 Golf, we approach you up to 284. Okay, so nicely trimmed out. We'll come back to 22 inches on the manifold pressure and 2300 RPM here for the cruise. Just get that nose down back towards 5,000 feet. And you can see as well, the Comanche really likes to hack along, even at this fairly modest power setting, we'll probably get nearly 160, 170 miles an hour out of the aircraft. So the autopilot can go in, we'll go into heading hold initially. First we need to select the autopilot master on. Number 432, probably missile approach, Roger, the altimeter 2984. 
we'll just wait for the autopilot there to run through its bite test. Okay, now indicating ready. So we just push and then rotate the rotary selector here. Come into heading. And we're going to outhold here as well. That's located down on the yoke. And you can see there the aircraft very nicely tracking our heading. And similarly, it certainly will maintain altitude. So CDI bar currently in GPS mode and we are on the CDI. So we're coming to track. And the command will now track the flight plan here based off the GTMXI input data. Turns our fuel state. Around 20, 25 years gallons now in each main tank. Cylinder head temperature there looking good. All pressure and temperatures both in the green. Another nice little demonstration here. The autopilot only has a certain amount of authority, so if we actually put the aircraft here out of trim, you can see we're getting a warning there that we do need to trim those down. And flex shift 507, uh, let's see. I don't know if it'll be better for you or not, but uh, you can go to right Delro if that works out better for you for the weather. And sure enough, if we get ourselves trimmed out once again, the warning disappears. So I'm sure it's been pretty obvious at this point, but the level of attention to detail in the aircraft is absolutely excellent. You can see there even the sun visor just vibrating lightly. One of the very few aircraft I can think of on the sim that really has any sort of visual effects like that. It's something I've been saying for a long time in many reviews that we really need to see from products and Certainly the A2A Comanche here is just a whole other level above most other products that we see in the sim. Is that your 555 expect a GPS for only 29 at Chester County? Yeah, I'll tell you what, you get the weather, you let me know what approach you want there. Just fly heading 340, I'll blow for you here in a minute. November 421, Sierra Charlie, Philly departure, I then climb and maintain, uh, let's see, you can climb and maintain 9 or 1000. Once you're Charlie Radar contact, just flies to Chester County, you have Timber 284, and you can just keep that left turn heading of uh, 090. So now that we are nicely established here in the cruise, we're doing about 165 miles an hour. I thought it'd be a good opportunity here to take a very quick look through the entire EFB. Firstly, the homepage, not a whole lot to say there really. That just shows the current loading status of the aircraft. Again, the Comanche does make use of quite a lot of external sounds, flight modeling, so you'll see that loading up as you load in the aircraft. For the flight info, fairly basic there, much of what you'd expect. You can see the outside environmental conditions, so QNH1016, we're above 16Ks visibility. 11 degrees Celsius OAT, no precipitation, we've got the wind, we've also got the crosswind and a current tailwind component. In terms of the aircraft, you can see we've currently got an endurance of around 3 hours 24. Flight time over towards Lock Island is only around 40 minutes. True speed 178 miles an hour. Ground speed is 184, so again, that slight tailwind just giving us a nice high cruise speed over towards destination. We've also got our range, about 546 nautical miles with our current fuel state. And also a few speeds there placarded in terms of the aircraft's operational limitations. With ZF 555, descent and maintain 4000. Cabin temperature is also modelled, and you can see currently 12 degrees, so getting a little bit cold in the cabin. Might as well take some cabin heat. And again, all of that is modelled. You can see the temperature is now increasing, so hopefully we'll be feeling a little bit more comfortable in just a moment's time. We also have a full set of checklists included in the tablet. So I'm using a paper checklist here today. No integrated SIM checklists at the moment, as best I can tell. We also have a full set of emergency checklists. And again, these really may well come in handy. The aircraft will fail, things will break, things will wear. And you might just find yourself with the engine failing on you in the middle of the cruise, at which point you will need to pull out the appropriate checklist. In terms of controls, a whole load of options there. We have our miscellaneous, that really pertains to the external equipment that we saw during the walk around. You can basically operate the aircraft via the tablet as well as via the cockpit controls. So you can see here we can turn on the various electrical systems, as well as the various lights. We've also got the option to switch out between various avionics setups, so no GPS at all. We can have a GNS 430, 530, a stack with both. We can also use the PMS 750 or the TDS GTN 750XI. We're using the GTN 750XI today. It's worth noting that is a payware module. 
In terms of the autopilot, again, you can also operate that here via the tablets. We can also auto start and cold and dark the aircraft. Very useful option there is again, the aircraft can be a little bit tricky to get started. So if you do just want to go flying, or you're perhaps not up to starting the aircraft realistically yet, you do have the option just to auto start. In terms of the options, we can simulate gyro drift. There's also gyro sound, cockpit persistence, which means of course all of your settings will be saved. Just reset our heading bug there. We can also choose whether or not we have visible passengers. Of course, today we've chosen to opt for our visible co-pilot. We can also have visible passengers down the back. Not going to demonstrate that just now. I think adding another 140 kilos of weight is probably going to upset the aircraft a little bit. Uh, exactly, triple five. If you want, you go right to a FACO now. You can also choose whether or not you have persistent state on per livery or per the entire set of aircraft. We've got per livery here, obviously a little bit more realistic. And realistic parking brake there as well, so again, you will need to depress the pedals before you pull the parking brake. Without the option turned off, I think you just have to actuate the parking brake, as you would with most other aircraft in the sim. You can also adjust the tablet volume, the warning volume, and the master volume of the aircraft. We have a set of advanced options. Very nice to see here, you can choose 8.33 kHz spacing on the comm radios. The default comm radios on the 250 are fairly old school. You can choose whether or not your hardware bindings in the sim operate the three-way gear switch. I've got it selected so that at the moment my hardware bindings just actuate up and down and I can move it to the off position thereafter. You can switch out the prop lever, currently we've got a more modern prop lever there, you can go for a more old school one. Another option that I really like, you can actually adjust the speeds here of the various trims. So rudder trim and elevator trim speeds. You can adjust the elevator force there as well which is great, so you do have some capacity to adjust the flight model to suit your own feeling and needs within the sim. The first aircraft I've seen as well where we actually have specific VR options. So we can choose whether or not we want the turbulence to display appropriately on flat screen or in VR. That's a nice touch. And we can also choose how much the turbulence actually affects the aircraft. You can see we're just getting the occasional light bump here at the moment. We can also choose the wear rate on the Comanche. So currently we've got normal. You can bump that right up to 10. And same with the failure rate, you can choose whether or not that's realistic, or you can go for 100% if you want some sort of fun and guaranteed failure during your flight. On the fuel load page, much as you'd expect there, we have the various aircraft weights. We can choose to add or remove passengers, as well as baggage. Obviously we loaded up all our baggage there on the ground at Hudson Regional. It's worth noting at the moment I haven't been able to remove the pilot model. I tried turning the weight down, I've tried clicking there as well. Currently the pilot model doesn't seem to be an option in terms of removal, which is a shame. I like to have that removed for the external shots on the ground. I suspect that's a little bit of a bug. I suspect that will be taken care of at a later date. It may be that I've missed something there. You can choose between metric and imperial units. And it is worth noting as well, you do have to set the aircraft up by the tablet. The Sims inbuilt fuel and load menu doesn't actually work correctly with the Comanche. So we can also adjust our fuel loading, there's also a couple of presets, and you can select here as well to update the digital engine monitor as we discussed on the ground. So if we hit that, that will enter the appropriate fuel quantities for the flight computer. We've also got our CFG, currently we're smack in the middle there in terms of our aft and forward limits. Maintenance, we already had a look at there on the ground, so we won't go through the engine and the airframe pages again. Engine analyzer is a really nice little touch, we saw that during the introduction. That essentially just shows you the modeling here of the engine. And again, A2A go into extreme depths when it comes to these sorts of things. It might not be clear on the face of it, but apparently each individual cylinder is modeled. The carb there, as you can see, is modeled. We've currently got a carb air temperature of 10 degrees. Each magneto is modeled. Everything in very high detail modeled quite accurately. And that really pays off, as I say, no other aircraft in the sim for me, and indeed any other sim that I've flown really has that feeling of being alive and a working piece of machinery as much as you tend to see with an A2A aircraft. Same for the electrical system there, you can see the alternator currently charging the battery and supplying the aircraft systems. And as well we've got a little indication here of all of our various circuit breakers. They're coming down to that starter circuit breaker again, you can see it hasn't popped this time. I, kinda, I don't really have anybody in your way, so whatever you need to do is fine. Last page there as well is the walk around page, obviously we took a look at that earlier. It is worth noting as well, you can do a complete overhaul, or as we saw during the introduction, we click on inspection. 
One thing I did like about the older A2A products is you couldn't inspect the aircraft in the air, only on the ground, which is obviously a little bit more realistic. But there on inspection you can see the various aircraft components, the battery now fully charged up, and everything looking to be in good condition at the moment. And again, same there with the engine. We can replace each individual component as we so wish. So that's a brief overview of the tablet itself. Looks like we're just over Waypoint Mooney, now tracking bound towards the Hartford VOR. So about another 20 minutes here in the cruise, we should be approaching the coastline fairly shortly. I think you can just see that at start 1 o'clock. So we'll just continue here up at 5,000 feet, 165 miles an hour, and we'll come back about 10 minutes before arrival into Block Island, and we can commence our descent. Remember 68 uh, Delta, fly heading at 100. Remember one Sierra Charlie climbing team one zero thousand. Just gonna exceed two five zero knots for now. I'll get you high here in just a second. Number two six Julia, you're clearing the Bravo air so I'm gonna have to back you around some stuff though. So uh it just proceed on course for now and expect vectors through the Bravo. Okay, so we're just approaching the eastern coastline. We've got Rhode Island out towards the east. And about ten minutes now to run here till Block Island. You can see that there just off the nose. So we'll get the command sheet coming down. First we'll just set up the course bar once again, so 128 inbound. And we'll centre up that heading bug. We'll come back into heading now on the autopilot. There's heading hold. In terms of the altitude, we'll take the out hold out. And we'll start reducing our power, we'll come back to 15 inches here for the descent. And as before, we'll do that nice and slowly. If we treat the engine nicely, then we're going to see less wear and tear, lower failure rate overall. We also want to avoid shock cooling the engine, so we'll keep a good eye here on our cylinder head temperatures. This is now 7445, clear on Alpha 2, clipping taxi to the Alpha ramp. So it's 15 inches, the aircraft now just entering into a descent, we'll go for around 500 feet per minute. In terms of the descent checklist, the prop is set through to cruise RPM, manifold pressure is set 15 inches. We'll keep the speed and we'll just keep enriching the mixture here as we descend. So we're showing about 20 miles to run, again you can see Block Island off the nose. We've got the Block Island VOR tuned up there as well, 117.8. Everything tracking nicely, we'll just take a quick look at Block Island. Then we come to flight plan. And we'll go for charts. In terms of the airport itself. Just want the ground chart here. We'll just take the approach and then at least we can see the runway direction. Proceed on to runway 33, Alpha. So you can see we've got uh, runway 1028. We're just going to come overhead the field. We'll probably come back round for a left hand downwind onto runway 28. So once again, the Comanche handling very nicely there during the cruise. The autopilot works very well. The autopilot doesn't tend to like any sort of time acceleration. It will work, but it will tend to progressively get more erratic as you go. Just increasing that mixture once again. We'll come all the way through to fully rich now, which is approaching 4,000 feet. In terms of the engine management computer, you can see we've got about 3 hours 50 endurance. Obviously that's not really accurate at the moment, we're not up a cruise speed. One feature which did amuse me, we're showing 5.4 USD there, I'm wondering whether or not that's giving you your fuel cost for the flight thus far. I think that would have been reset when we reset things via the tablet. Nice little touch of that is the case. So send head temperature now, just on the lower end there of the green band, once again we'll keep a good eye on things. But obviously we need to keep the aircraft descending here as well, just coming through 4,000. Look we'll at our downward checks done now, there's nothing else to do, so brakes are checked and off, undercarriage will hold. Mixture is rich, fuel pump is on in terms of our fuel quantities, about 20 US guns now in each main tank. Ox tanks are indicating the same as before. Light instruments. 
We've got 130 there on the compass, 130 on the HSI. Again, gyro drift can be modelled, but we've turned that off currently for the flight today. Kin H is set. Bang lights are on, harness is secure. And probably worth taking the car peat as well here as we descend. We really ought to have done that at the top of descent. We're coming to VOR now on the CDI. Again, that's based off the Block Island VOR. Or the uh, Sandy Point VOR, I think. It's the name of the actual station itself. Just check again there on the flight plan. Sandy Point. Connect car with air traffic to now over the numbers no factor. Obviously though, no need to fly the VOR approach today. We've got lovely, beautiful conditions over on the island. And just coming down through 3,000 feet, so about another six minutes here in the descent, about another 11 miles to run. We're currently doing about two and a half miles a minute over the ground. So about another four minutes here till we hit the island. We should be pretty spot on there in terms of our profile. Obviously we don't want to arrive overhead the field at ground level. So we'll aim to arrive at a thousand feet and then as I say we'll enter in for a left hand pattern. We're not really using the VOR here so we can actually set that now onto our runway course. Just help us visualize where the runway is, what we're looking for and planning our approach. So you can see at the moment we're going to be turning right back in towards runway 28 and then we'll enter in for a left hand pattern. Again, according to the forecast, not much wind around today. Block Island. And you can see that as well, looking at the water conditions. Pretty much a mill pond just off the coastline. There's two and a half thousand. Unfortunately, one of the hardest things to show you with an A2A product, and it's really one of the product strengths, is just how finessed everything is in terms of that modeling. And as the aircraft ages, as you fly it more and more, and particularly if you fly aggressively, you will see things, as I say, start to degrade. For example, you might start to see higher oil temperatures there on subsequent flights as the engine starts to wear. So again, very nice level of detail. And I can't stress enough, really, the aircraft does feel like a working, living piece of machinery. It really is a bit of an art form that A2A have managed to achieve that with a piece of digital software. Texas Tower, Skyhawk 1455, Victor is ready to go on 2-4 and uh, we'd like the option. Skyhawk 1455, Victor, Digital Tower, hold short of runway 24, traffic crossing downfield. Check up, let's go on, proceed via Delta Golf, hold short runway 24. Delta Golf, hold short 24, jump off. Unfortunately, not the sunniest day here on the island. Having flown all this way, you would hope for a bit of sunshine. Vision with the field now, we'll take the autopilot out. Just having to trim the aircraft again, we're slightly out of trim as we were adjusting the trim to demonstrate the autopilot caution earlier on. Okay, Hack 1455, Victor, Dutchess Tower, runway 24, clear for takeoff and cross coast traffic. You'll be following Cessna departing now. So we'll just continue that descent here on the dead side at the moment. And we can start coming off the power here again now. Runway 24. Uh, clear to take off, and uh, we'll follow that to five, five, six, So back to 15 inches, we'll start slowing up. Zero, three, so joining for a bit of a midfield crosswind. There's the threshold for runway 28. And just to demonstrate the change of noise here in the cruise with the DV window open, we'll just open that up once again. Obviously things much louder now. Let's come over the field, there's the Sandy Point VOR. Excellent sounds, really excellent level of attention to detail in almost every respect from A2A. Runway 2450 to options, Zipri Hotel. I don't want to sound like I'm getting carried away here with all my praise, but it really is hard to fault the product. I think it's pretty clear, hopefully you can see for yourselves, that the aircraft really is on another level from really what we see from most other developers in the sim. And that's not to disparage other products, there are certainly many, many other great products for the franchise at this point. But really, if you want a GA aircraft, this is it. This is pretty much as good as it gets in terms of flight simulation. So we've already got our downward checks out of the way. We are below 150 miles now, so we'll take the gear down. So 12 cost, we're 24 Golf, Alpha 4, Alpha 5, shut the terminal. 
Just track outbound, slightly longer here on our downwinds. Okay, we do have a green light. Really amazes me just how long the wing is actually on the Comanche. It's almost almost looks a little bit like a glider. So coming off the power once again, we'll take the car peats. Speed just coming back into the white arc, so we'll take a stage of flap. Turning in onto base. And this is where having that HSI set up really helps. We can see where our 90 degree turn is without even having to look at the runway, although of course primarily here we want to be flying visually. A little bit close in there on the turn. So we'll just continue straight round onto final. Four whites on the Pappy at the moment. We'll take another stage of flap. And in terms of our final checks, pitch is full fine, undercarriage is down. Go full flaps. Flaps are set. Landing clearance has been received, the runway is clear. And a little bit fast here currently, so all the way back to idle now on the power. Again, cylinder head temperatures just within the green. We want to be back around 95 miles now here as we come down final approach. Yeah, unfortunately a little bit of a grey day here on Block Island. 500. Let's check to 500. Go back to the down with the option. We'll get rid of the carb heat, just in case of the go rounds. A little bit higher still on the Pappy. Easy enough to correct. Still trimming at the moment. Again, the aircraft just feels really good on the controls. Very nice to hand fly. Feels stable, it feels weighty. Feels responsive as well. It's very easy to finesse your position, very easy to predict what's going to happen. So cutting the throttle. The same in the flare, the aircraft handles absolutely beautifully in the flare. It really does have that GA feel to it. Let's touch down. And we're not going to make that first exit, so we'll just roll through to the second right. Okay, so vacating in towards the apron, we'll take the flaps up. Transponders back through to ground, we'll go back through to standby. And in terms of the lights, we'll get the fuel pump off, hang light off, strobe and the PT heat can go off. And we'll just bring ourselves back around here to park outside the terminal building. This for me is just one of those absolutely superb swimming experiences. The scenery, once again, amazing. And absolutely the same for the aircraft. Seven Quebec Charlie, you're number two, following Cessna traffic, just turning left base, you got him tight. It's onto the brakes, part brake on. Back up to 1000 RPM for the shutdown checks. The checklist actually calls for idle here on the throttle. Electrical equipment off, so autopilot master off. Everyone looks master off. The rest can stay as is for the time being. Prop is set fully forward. Mixture through to idle cutoff. Lovely sounds there. Would have been nice just to see a touch more vibration as we shut down. Ignition can go off. Master switch is off. Take the beacon off. We'll set the control locks once again. And we'll get the door opened up. And we can go and enjoy Block Island. So there you go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed our run over towards Block Island in the absolutely excellent A2A PA24 Comanche.
I promised you during the introduction that the aircraft was something pretty special. I think hopefully I've demonstrated that to you with our flight here today. The Comanche 250, despite on the face of it being a relatively simplistic aircraft, really is a cut above almost every other aircraft that we've seen in the sim to date. A2A and their AccuSim technology have really pushed the boundaries of what's possible within Microsoft Flight Simulator. The Comanche is a very exciting addition to the sim and it really pushes the platform ever further forward in terms of realism. As usual, we'll break down the product into some positives and negatives, although as you can probably tell, not too many negative points that I have for you here today. My first negative with the product would be in terms of purchasing. Currently the aircraft is only available from the HOA website, which is absolutely fine. You do however only get a limited number of downloads, 10 downloads per purchase. I suspect that if push comes to shove, HOA would reactivate the number of downloads available should you so require. But I always find it a little bit upsetting when I purchase a product and then I'm told how many times or not I can download it. The livery selection for the aircraft is somewhat limited, there's only 4 or 5 liveries from memory available. Not a huge deal of course and I'm sure we'll see many third party liveries for the Comanche available over on websites such as flightsim.to. But nevertheless it would have been nice to have a slightly wider selection. I do really like the livery that we featured here today but some of the other liveries are fairly basic. We talked already about the inability to remove the pilot model from the aircraft. Again, it may be that I missed something. I did try playing around with the tablet, the weight and balance menu, both on the EFB and within the sim. At the moment, I couldn't figure out a way to remove the pilot, but I suspect that may just be a little bit of a bug. You can certainly remove both the co-pilot and the passengers. No native in-sim checklist available with the aircraft. Again, you do have checklists provided via the tablet, but I know some of you like to follow through within the sim. It does also mean you can't use the in-sim checklist to find your way around the cockpit. Again, a fairly minor issue as far as I'm concerned, but it is worthy of pointing out. Again, the Comanche also isn't very comfortable in terms of handling time acceleration. At least with the autopilot in, I found under time acceleration, when riding through any turbulence, the autopilot tended to overcorrect, and you tended to end up in a bit of an oscillation that would get progressively worse. I presume that's as a result of the aircraft's external flight modelling. Again, to my mind, not a major issue. But for those of you who do want to get from A to B as quickly as possible, then do just be cognizant of that fact. You may have to manually fly. One last slight negative from me with regards to the aircraft texturing. Overall, of course, the Comanche is very well done. A very high level of attention to detail. Everything is textured pretty immaculately. I would say that the texturing sits very much between the likes of Just Flight and Carinado. So not right up there with the very best, but certainly an exemplary effort. The only thing that I would say there, and I don't know whether or not it's a texturing issue or a PBR issue, some of the texturing can tend to look a little bit quote unquote milky at times, certainly under specific lighting conditions, you may have noticed that during the flight. In terms of what I like about the aircraft, pretty much everything else. Minus a couple of small caveats that we just mentioned, the texturing and modelling of the PA24 is absolutely excellent. As with every aspect of the PA24, you can certainly tell that the product was a real labour of love. In terms of the system's depth, I think the flight itself really speaks volumes there. The Comanche makes use of A2A's AccuSim technology, giving us a highly detailed, highly accurate, and again highly dynamic, highly organic version of the PA24. I think it's fair to say that this is pretty much as close as you'll get to really feeling like you own your own aircraft without of course going out and buying the real deal. The flight model is also pretty excellent. HOA model most of the aircraft externally from the sim and that really shows the Comanche handles very differently versus most default Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft. Hand flying the Comanche is a real joy. I haven't flown the type myself in the real world but again the controls feel very plausible. The PA24 does have a certain level of weight to it. The aircraft does feel like a fairly high performance machine both in terms of power and manoeuvrability. But that being said it doesn't feel snappy on the controls, again doesn't feel overly sensitive. It feels very good and certainly all of that external flight modelling that A2A have done outside of Microsoft Flight Simulator has really paid off. The sounds on the aircraft are generally superb and I think that's one of A2A's real tricks up their sleeve. They tend to use highly comprehensive, highly accurate sound sets with their products. So that really makes you feel immersed and actually as well makes the aircraft feel more realistic to be frank. A2A tend to own a lot of the aircraft that they actually create and that really goes to show with the sound set. Everything there seems to be pretty spot on. There is supposed to be an auto executor program that runs alongside the aircraft when you fire it up. For whatever reason at the moment that isn't working for me so I'm having to manually run the program. And you do need the program running otherwise there are no internal sounds on the aircraft. Not a major issue, a slight inconvenience though. One other point with the sounds that we didn't touch on during the flight, there is also headphone simulation modelled. 
so you can plug in your virtual headphones, the sounds will be dulled out within the sim. In terms of additional features with the aircraft, I think it goes without saying, but the A2A Comanche is once again exemplary. Nice that we have all of the external equipment, the extensive onboard tablet, but also the comprehensive maintenance functionality, the ability to carry out an accurate walk around. These are again just things on another level that we're really not seeing from other developers. But hopefully the PA24 will encourage other developers to follow suit. And hopefully again this product will just continue to push the boundaries of what we're seeing available within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Lastly, in terms of the FPS, I was getting about 46 FPS in the Comanche versus around 54 in the default Cessna 152. So a pretty frame rate friendly option for the sim. Exceptional really given the level of detail, the level of depth. I suspect a lot of that comes down to the external modelling. So again, a really nice way of running things in the sim. Just spreading that load a little bit more evenly, presumably, over your CPU. Anyway, in conclusion, as I mentioned during the introduction, A2A have long been one of my favourite developers within Flight Simulation. I don't recall them ever really having dropped the ball. They've made consistently excellent, consistently high quality products, which again go into a level of depth that we rarely see from other developers. I'm very happy to see A2A back in the game. I'm sure that many of you are as well. It's not often that I outright recommend a product, but certainly if you are looking for a GA aircraft within Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is as good as it gets. Anyway, ladies and gents, once again, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. And on that note, as always, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. I do hope that all of you are having a great day, wherever you are. Take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.